I I will always regard any type of affirmative scrubbing of social media pages as an act of significance because it takes effort to do it. And I know just every year changing the copyright year on the PFT Twitter page, inevitably after January 1, my son will say, you need to change your copyright year to the next year. And it's like, oh, I got to remember how to go in here and edit. And it's, you just have to stop and do it. So to go in and make changes, structural changes to your social media pages, it takes effort. So you don't just do it because you feel like doing it because you're bored on a Friday afternoon. You do it to send a message. And what's the context here? All these other receivers not named Debo Samuel making a ton of money as Debo Samuel goes in and sends a message to someone by scrubbing the 49ers entirely out of his social media page. Entirely gone. Poof. How can you not? Of course immediately pivot to what is or isn't happening between the 49ers and a guy who they have transformed into a running back. Remember he told us at the Super Bowl, he was surprised how that happened. It's yep. not like he came to the NFL saying, Hey, I want to be a receiver and a running back. I want to do it all. They put that on him. It makes him more valuable. It puts him at greater physical risk. It puts him in a position where maybe the tread's going to be off the tires sooner than it otherwise would be because they're running him between the tackles, these aren't just jet sweeps and bubble screens. He's getting the ball like a running back. So he's more valuable in his mind. He hasn't gotten paid yet. And I don't think it's an accident. I don't think it's a, a, a fluke. I think he's sending a message by doing what he did late last week, Chris. I, I agree, Mike. I don't, I, no doubt about it. You know, one, I mean, you explained correctly to, to say it takes time and effort. Two, you know, we've discussed a lot on this show already. I mean, you're at home with, you know, you know what? You got a 24-year-old kid. You know, I mean, I think it's it's pretty safe to say, like, kids, you know, young men between 18 and 28, social media is how they can communicate. I mean, that's what they do. They, they don't even like, swap numbers sometimes. Just give me your handle. Give me this. Let me Snapchat you, blah, blah, blah. They text and do all that through there, direct messages, all of it. So, yes, that's that means something. That, that, there's, there's no question about that for Debo Samuel. That That's a real message right off the bat. And then, you know, I agreed with you in the fact that yeah, it's going to be interesting. We've talked about this a lot, you know, over the last month and a half, haven't we, Mike? With Jimmy Garoppolo, his 25 or 26 million sitting on the books. Debo Samuel, the player he is. Uh, Nick Bosa, the player he is. They're, it's time. It's time to pay him. They're going to want to be paid, especially the way they play, to your point. They're both, you know, pedal to the metal, hairs on fire, let me run through the wall type of players. They're definitely going to want to be played, paid that way. And then you get into the conversation of, like, you know, again, Tyree Kill, awesome. Devontae Adams, awesome. I get that. But I don't know. Put me in the group that was raising my hands to go, uh, Debo Samuel, awesomer now in 2022. I'm taking him. He'd be the guy I'd take to go, whoa, wait, I could throw a slant to him and he can break a tackle and run a guy over and run for 70 yards, give him a reverse, 70 yards, toss sweep between the tackles, whatever, like you talked about. You know, so he's a phenomenal skill set. He is arguably the number one weapon in football, in, in my opinion. It's him. It's Jamar Chase. It is Tyree Kill. You know, Justin Jefferson in that combo for me, do So that's where he's special. Then, Mike, I think you make the great point, too, about what he said at the, the Super Bowl. This is more than your regular receiver, which I think there's got to be a little more urgency probably on his side of that, you know, conversation there because of what you're talking about. He goes over the middle a lot, and they throw him the ball in crowds of people. He takes a lot of big hits. He already plays a physical brand of style. And then he's playing basically running back, which we know is – full of car crash hits, and then to triple effect on that, plays for a coach who's brilliant at getting his stars to football, and he rides them to his credit. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be mad at Shanahan for that. He rides it. He knows how to get his guys the ball. Let's go, 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 go. Well, it adds to your point too, Mike, of a little wear and tear on the tires too when you got a coach like that and does that. So I understand the urgency and the message from Devo Samuel. I certainly do. That's why it's all the more important for him to get paid now because if you wait a year and you continue to be used the way that you've been used, you are at greater risk of injury than if you're strictly playing receiver. You're at greater risk of chronic injury, not right. something serious that knocks you out 
for the balance of a season, but just those little things that it always felt like he was finding a way to fight through something and he always found a way to do it. And you know what? If I'm him, I, 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 I don't know that I necessarily hold out because I think it's 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 too hard for a guy who wasn't a first round pick entering his fourth year. It's too hard to do that. But I think at some point you say, I'm not playing running back until you get this taken care of. Yeah. I'll be a receiver. Mm-hmm. But but if if you're not gonna get me a contract before the start of the fourth year, I am a receiver. I am not a running back. I no longer volunteer to play running back because you know, you're, you're making the guy more versatile and more valuable to the team, but you're using him extensively yeah. at a position where the market value isn't the same. Right. It's like, if I have to choose one of the two here, I'll just be a receiver. So if you want me to be this weapon that can be deployed all these different ways, let's get this taken care of now. I am receiver value plus to you. I am critical to to you. Maybe you think you can find someone else who does what I do. Good luck trying. You have me. I've done well. The window is open for me to get paid. Here's where the market is gone. Yeah. Here's where the salary cap's going. Don't get mad at me because I want mine. I see all these other guys who aren't me getting theirs. I want mine. And if you think you can find somebody better, go for it. Until then, I want mine. He's perfectly justified in that. You know, Peter and I kind of went back and forth a little on Friday. Peter thinks he should be patient. I I think that when the window's open in this era of the NFL Agreed and guys who play the same position, yeah, who aren't as good as you, are getting that kind of money, I'll oh, just be patient. Bull crap to that. I'm done being patient. I'm done. They're all getting theirs. I want mine because I go out there every day and I'm putting my body on the line. And, you know, he should not. He should not do anything. No. He should not set foot on the field. It should be the T.J. Watt situation. Until he gets his contract, I am not putting a cleat on my foot. Agreed. Agreed. You know, I, I don't like saying that, you know, because I'm a 49er fan and I like Kyle Shanahan, obviously. But, it, I mean, if I'm going to put myself in Debo Samuel's shoes or if I was his agent, I would say the same thing. I, I, I really would. Uh, I'm with you there all the way. And I was going to say something off of what you said there. Um, but either way, you know, the, the the thing and the value of the football player is the context of the touches, too. You know, it's 136 touches on the football last year. 59 carries, right? 77 receptions. But also, within that, of course, the 59 touches as a running back, you're taking big hits for the most part. And then we talked about their offense and the passing game. You know, Jimmy G's not famous for throwing the ball outside the numbers or down the field. So a lot of it's over the middle. Car crash type catches over the middle. He's got that aspect to deal with. And then when you just break it down and look at the pure talent, what the guy's doing, that's where you just go, oh, my gosh. I mean, 59 carries, 6.2 yards per carry, eight touchdowns rushing the football. More impressive of the, the 1,400 yards receiving, 18.2 average yards perception. And again, the context here, everybody. This is a, this is, we're talking about an offense and a quarterback who can't throw the ball down the field all that well. Nobody's really that worried about down the field Jimmy Garoppolo pass attack. And it's 18.2 yards per catch. That's insane. So that's how awesome he is. He is one of those guys that can do a lot with a little. Screen behind the line of scrimmage, like in the Rams game in the NFC Championship. Breaks three tackles, breaks somebody else, outruns everybody for a 40-yard touchdown. That's special, you know. You, you just, you're not going to find a lot of guys like that. And I'm with you, Mike, to your point. He's, he's got to do it now. And the 49ers <laughs> need to get him taken care of, you know. And, and I, I remember a general manager telling me years ago that – before you give a guy a big contract, you always got to be careful what you say publicly because that comes back to haunt you when it's time to pay the player. And I look at some of the quotes from Kyle Shannon. There was a yeah. moment in the playoff win over the Cowboys where Debo Samuel was heard by NFL Films telling Kyle Shanahan, give me the football. And Shanahan was asked about that in the week leading up to their playoff win over the 49ers. And he said, sometimes uh, someone telling me to get them in the ball doesn't mean anything to me. 
sometimes it's just interesting to hear the words. But when Debo says, get me the ball, you watch how the guy runs. You know how much he means it. Debo is as real of a guy as I've ever been around, and he has a passion for this game that is making him one of the best players in this league. That's a quote that if you represent Debo Samuel, you print off, you laminate, to the extent they still have laminating machines. You make it an NFT, and you carry it around in your digital wallet, and you show it to Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch repeatedly. And look, I I have no problem with them telling the truth about their guy, but the point is those truths become quotes that will be. A smart agent will remind Kyle Shanahan, if they're at an impasse, if the 49ers are like, well, you know, you know how this offense works. We got a lot of guys that can run the ball. We got a lot of guys that can catch the ball. We can find cheap guys. You pull up that quote and you say, you can't find many guys like this. And this is one of the realities of having great players. Debo Samuel, Nick Bosa, how many times have we said they got to figure out Jimmy Garoppolo because he's chewing up $25 million in cap space right now. You get rid of him, you got all the money you need to sign Debo Samuel and Nick Bosa. That, that that's Because right now they're under $2 million in cap space. Right. Jimmy G's gone. The moment he's gone, more than $25 million land on the cap. So the, to the extent they're getting pressure from Debo, and I think they are, and they're probably getting pressure from Nick Bosa, they, got, they better have a plan that it consists of offloading $25 million in cap space that's currently under the name of Jimmy G so they can get these two guys taken care of. Yeah, yeah, uh, agreed. Agreed. I mean, well, we know how important he is to their football team. And I think from Debo Samuel's perspective to everything we've laid out there, you know, where he's got to be extra careful is the fact that he plays a different brand of style than most wide receivers in football. He plays an extremely physical brand. He is the kind of guy that I would look at to go, yeah, I would – I would worry four or five years from now, like it's not the same arc or career arc as a receiver, most receivers in football, where you go, oh, okay, it's year eight or nine. They might not be quite as fast, but they're still good and all of that. You know, Debo, with the way he plays, yeah, like you've already discussed, the, the cumulative effect of all the big hits, the big shots, all of that, that's where – you know, it could it could wear a guy down with the way Debo Samuel plays. So that that's what's going to be interesting. He's a huge part of that offense, that's for sure. Especially with the way I would think Shanahan wants to play with Trey Lance and the faking the speed sweeps and the reverses and the quick play action passes. That's where I would think Debo has, you know, got some power in this situation. But I think the other side of this story is, like we talked about a little too, and we're going to start to, I think, see what some of these teams really feel – because uh, this is a new conversation I know that's going on in the NFL, and I know we texted a little about this yesterday, Mike, just in the fact that uh, I think there's, hey, some people in the NFL look at it like, hey, we got to have one of these receivers. These guys are great. we got to have one of these difference makers. And I know there's another part of the league that's going, what? I'm not paying $30 million or $27 million for receivers. That's just I'm not buying into that. There's good ones coming out every year, like we talked about last week a little bit with the draft and stuff. we got good guys getting drafted third, fourth round. So there's going to be, you know, some teams that are into this and some teams that are not. And it's going to be interesting to see what Shanahan does here in this situation because he does have great ability to evaluate wide receivers, too. It's the running back dynamic that is happening for the receiver position where there are many guys every year coming into the league who can play at a high level at the receiver position. But we still have veteran receivers getting a ton of money, I think, in large part because their careers – can last longer they can perform at a high level right. longer yeah. than a running back who right. by the time he's 28 or 29 the the horse is moving toward the barn by the time you know a receiver is 28 29 he's still in his prime still he's prime. got multiple great years left right. so we're seeing that that distinction between the Devonte adams the tyree kills the stefan diggs getting huge money but still we know that there's going to be great receivers that teams find in the draft this year Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.